Good morning, good afternoon, good evening class. Um, since we will be using a lot of mind maps, I thought I should give you uh, an overview of the mind maps, how they are created and how they are used. So here is a mind map of the mind maps. So as you can see, uh, for almost all the mind maps, they will start with a chief complaint. So you'll have a patient uh, chief complaint or a patient presentation or a symptom or even an abnormal lab finding listed on the top. And that will make each mind map very unique. And then you'll see a list of differential diagnoses or diagnoses that we should be thinking about when we are, think when we are dealing with that uh, patient presentation. And most of these differential diagnoses will be grouped. Um, and this grouping is done in a very strategic fashion. When we're doing that grouping, that's based upon usually a high yield question, and uh, you're already familiar with uh, what high yield question is. Um, that is either one feature that divides the differentials into categories, or uh, a pathophysiologic mechanism that divides the differentials into the categories. So for example, some examples are the age of the patient, prevalence of different diseases. Uh, a lot of the times it is going to be location or duration of the presentation or, or, or something of that nature. And you can see that some of the differentials here uh, in this mind map are, are red, so or a different color. And that is basically done for a reason uh, so that we pay attention to these in particular whenever we are uh, uh, making sure that there is not a red flag situation or a red flag diagnosis. So next to the differentials list, you'll see a whole bunch of symptoms and signs, and those are uh, basically uh, listed in front of all the differentials or all the diagnoses. There may be some overlap in those symptoms and signs, but this is basically a lot of information that we need to keep in mind when we are evaluating the patients. Uh, there will be um, features some, such as uh, nature of the problem, nature of the pain, uh, radiation of pain, alleviating features, and stuff like that. Uh, all of that information needs to be in our memory so we can recall that uh, and as we ask questions from the patients, we increase or decrease the likelihood of one versus the other differential diagnosis. So for example, if differential diagnosis number one or two have uh, three or four uh, features present in that particular patient, uh, then we can say, all right, well, these differentials are high or highly likely on our list and some of the others, for example, number nine and 10, doesn't have any feature present, we can say that is very less likely. So this is basically your medium yield related information and this is symptoms and signs that patients are presenting with for all the differentials. Um, and we just want to make sure that they are listed in the order of uh, how prevalent those symptoms and signs are uh, for each disease. So for example, if a patient has, let's say you are thinking about bronchitis in a patient who's coming in with low grade fever. Uh, then cough should be the first symptom that we should list in this, in this box because uh, that is a very common feature of bronchitis. So you don't want to uh, put their insomnia as a feature, uh, as, as a first feature. And you will become more and more familiar with that as the, as the course goes on. And next, you will also, in the mind maps, in a typical mind map, you'll see information related to all the labs and images. Um, for all the differentials that are included in the mind maps. Uh, but of course, uh, that is going to be one of our later uh, uh, part of our workup when we are seeing our patients. And then here you can see um, there is going to be uh, a box and you'll see this in almost all the mind maps. Uh, there is going to be a hint giving, uh, telling you what to ask when you, or how to address an urgent or emergent situation. Most of the time this is going to be uh, patient's vital signs and a patient's appearance. And then there will be a little bit of information on what is a high yield question for this particular mind map or this particular patient presentation. There will also be a little bit of information on uh, what are some of the medium yield questions. You will uh, sometimes see a list of uh, reference questions or backup questions, you can call them. So just in case if you forget some features here in the in front of the differentials, you can just refer back to that list that will be given in a concise manner on the site. Uh, this may or may not always be present. 
And then uh, how can we use the mind maps with the epilogical approach? So you are all familiar with the epilogical approach. So uh, it is a four-step approach that we are going to be using throughout the year for all the patient presentations. So this is generalizable approach. So we know that we can use it and apply it for all uh, patient presentations. Uh, but the mind maps are not generalizable. They are very specific to each patient presentation. How do we incorporate or integrate both of these phenomena? Um, as you know, that epilogical approach has four steps. The first step is uh, building a list of probable diagnoses. So you can see here that uh, you have uh, a list of differentials. So this is the first step of the epilogical approach. So as soon as we are seeing the patients, we are creating a list of differential diagnoses in our head. So that is what we're doing in the mind map right here. The next step is making sure that there is no urgent or emergent situation or addressing that. So you can see by uh, looking at the patient's vital signs and appearance, we are addressing the second step. And then at the same time, we are trying to correlate that with the di differential diagnosis in which those are gender emergent situations are going to be highly present. The next step is weighing. And as we already know, uh, weighing is basically making sure, uh, basically figuring out which diagnosis is more likely versus less likely based upon the medium yield question related information that we are asking from the patient. So we are doing that when we're using this portion of the mind map. And then finally, we are removing any anchor bias or not arriving at any diagnosis prematurely. And we do that by looking at additional information uh, or asking patients questions about additional information that are present in all the differentials. And then finally, we are uh, looking at the labs or ordering labs and coming to the final diagnosis. So that is how the mind maps are created, applied, and used. And that is how the epilogical approach is incorporated into the mind maps. So I hope this is understandable. And uh, finally, uh, when we are creating and using the mind maps, uh, what is it that we should do? We should make sure that our lists are, our differentials are very concise. Uh, they are comprehensive. They are thorough. Uh, the, they are organized in a fashion that is uh, understandable. And you can recall and access that memory very easily. They can, the differentials can be built in a, uh, in a mnemonic fashion, but as long as you are able to access that information from your memory very easily, that is, uh, that is great. Um, they should not be just haphazard. Uh, they can be uh, divided based upon uh, common features, for example, location and duration of the problem or uh, pathophysiologic category. Um, we also need to make sure that there is enough information in front of the differentials where it gives us substantial data to, uh, to uh, make one or the other diagnosis more likely or less likely. We also need to make sure that we have information available that confirms our diagnosis that we are considering. So after a period of time, if we have arrived at a working diagnosis, we don't just stand there and say, okay, what, what do we do next? We have a conf confirmatory test available in our mind maps. We need to make sure that we have features present for each and every disease uh, that we can uh, use to say, okay, we have ruled out based upon this feature a particular disease or not. And we need to make sure that we have features present that tell us that the patient in this presenting with this chief complaint is, is in an urgent or emergent situation and how to address that. How, uh, what is it that we should not do? We should not be haphazard. We should not create our mind maps mindlessly. Um, so they should be mindful. We should not just put words on a paper or a board and just say that is a mind map uh, because that will basically um, defeat the purpose. Uh, we should not create a mind map with uh, incomplete information. And finally, we should not do it if we're not going to be able to recall the information in the mind map accurately and uh, efficiently. So that is it about the mind maps. And finally, if you have any questions, you can definitely let me know. Thank you.